What are you doing outside your studio, they'll say. Are you doing a pit fire, they'll say. Yes, I'll say. Today's a very exciting day for me because today is my last day off until I have to start school again. But I called Smud because I wanted to do a pit fire, and it turns out they chopped down so many trees that they tumble them up right into a wood chipper, and then they put them in a giant pile of wood, which means I don't have to pay for wood chip. So we're gonna do a pit fire today, but at first I want to show you this giant colossal pile of wood chips that Smud is just letting me have. Woo! Oh, what, go to Home Depot for $100 worth of wood chips, or just come here for free? It smells really good over here, actually. I think that's how I know I'm a real artist, because at some point, when I was digging through it, I was like, man, I really hope I don't get bit by, like, a black widow or some kind of tree insect while I'm in there and then the other part of my brain that overrid that was like but the amount of art you're about to get will totally be worth it even if you get bitten even though I understand these are just a bunch of tarps with that stuff inside of it and this would be a much easier job with a truck I still stand by the statement that I don't need a truck for this job look I'm not saying you guys should go and get a bunch of bark inside of your car but I will say if you do my car smells really good now Okay, we got all the bark. That one is actually double the size of that one. It just doesn't look like it from here. And I'm betting that these two fill that. So now that we got all the bark over here, right, and all the mulch and whatnot, which is the main key for the fuel that we need, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting together all of the, what I like to call, carbonate and oxide bombs. They're not real bombs, don't worry, but they're little tiny packages of carbonates and oxides, contaminants that color the clay as they go through pit firing. Otherwise, I would just get brown and black and white which I don't want. I want something that has a little bit of color to it. So I'm going to get some cobalt, some nickel, some copper, put them together in little tiny paper things, throw them in there as the fire goes and see how it likes it. What I did during my last pit fire is I would get little bits of paper, I put like copper carbonate, cobalt carbonate, and I would just start mixing them like some kind of really bad drug dealer. I put them in these little napkins right here, right? And then sometime during or before the fire, I'll roll them up like this and then I'll chuck them in there. And these little guys give it a little bit more color than it wouldn't usually have. So I'm gonna make a bunch of these and see where I can strategically put them in the kiln when we start firing. I was talking to Justin on Instagram and he had said that lint is one of the things that he likes to use to start his fires and he starts them from the top up. So he doesn't start it from a hole at the bottom like I did when I did mine last time. He just lights the top on fire and just lets the rest of it go down. And to be fair, I do have dryer lint. I can very easily get dryer lint from my dryer right now and go and start this fire but I also want to make sure this works. I had four pieces to fit in here, but I couldn't because these two are too big. So what I did is I tipped one on its side, right? So this is about how big we're gonna do it right now. And this is all we got. So we're gonna get this started soon, but right now I have to put all the fuel in there, all the combustible stuff, right? So that's what we're gonna do right now. So you're just gonna watch me on the struggle bus for a second. Such a boy. Okay, so I put the pottery in there, I put all the fuel in there, I put the little carbonate and oxide bundles in there so that we get a little bit of color maybe later. So I got the fire starters here. I'm gonna put these on top just like Justin said and just let it go 
for about maybe 30, 40 minutes, and then I'm gonna lit it and let it go for the rest of the day. You get one here, okay. And you get one here. Tuck you in nice and neat, like a little baby. I know you already had one for lunch, but you get another one, cause I love you. Now I'm gonna cut this part short just because I assume that you guys don't wanna see something light on fire for like six hours straight. Unless you do, and then like, see somebody. But I'm still gonna cut this part off. Okay, I've been letting it heat up for a little while. And I've also been keeping it open so the fire can actually feed on some oxygen. So we're going to check it now. You can see from the fire, the top of the metal roof has started to kind of like peel off its own paint. But that's okay. I don't, I don't really mind that too much. That happened last time too, so it's not like it's abnormal or anything. Hey guys, is the pit fire ready yet? It's lit. So I just opened it up to see how good it was and dropped a little bit more cobalt carbonate in there and it started up again, which means it was starving for oxygen. So it's a good thing I opened it back up, but at the same time, now it's going to take a couple more hours and it's starting to get dark. So I'm probably going to go to sleep, see how this comes out in the morning. I should not have put that piece in there. Okay guys, it's morning time now. I'm going to open up this kiln and see what we got. My clothes still smell like pit fire and I love it. Oh uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Now these two, these two I kind of know, like I didn't put any extra thing in them, but this one right here. Yeah, let's see if we can bring it out safely. Pretty sure I can pull these out with just one hand. Oh, it's still a little bit warm, but that's okay. Whew. Whew, that is a big boy. I'll tell you what, that's a big one right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I dropped a little bit of cobalt and, and copper in there, and we got a little bit of color, not too much. We're going to wash these off and see how it actually went, because once you wash them, the real color comes out, and then we're probably going to seal them and send them off to art shows. Time. Oh, yeah. That one's good. That one's real good, too. These didn't come out bad at all. I'm pretty, I'm especially happy with this spot here. You can see there's a big spot and a break and then another big spot. Oh, and then another one right there. Ooh, it's so nice. We're gonna wash these off to see their real color and then I'm gonna come back to you right here. aren't too bad. I didn't get the color that I wanted, but that's what you get when you do your oxides and carbonates wrong and you throw them in the fire at the wrong time. I'm going to be doing a lot more pit fires, and not only that, I'm going to start giving some pit fire stuff to patrons of mine because honestly, they helped me build this kiln a lot more than my own paycheck did. So thank you so much. I'm honestly debating giving this one 
to a patron just because it's not meant for an art show it's just for me and these two and this one are meant for an art show right but I have to seal them first we're gonna go to Alpha Fired Arts and buy some sealer and see if we can seal these and that job is for the future Dante I literally just woke up a little bit ago last time I did a pit fire piece I came to Alpha and instead of using bowling ball wax or some type of other wax that a lot of other people use I just used this spray that was meant for pit fire pieces and to seal them ah yes I mean, should I get clear gloss or super gloss? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll just take I'll just take two of these now. Okay, these two were actually super easy to find, so we're gonna go and spray the pieces now. But before I go, I'm gonna put my hands on some new artwork. Ooh, so nice, so nice. Okay, so we're back at the house and we got the super glossy stuff. I actually bought two cans because at the rate at which I'm gonna start making this stuff, if I ever decide just not glaze it and pit fire it instead, I'm gonna have to gloss everything. Thank you, Duncan, who doesn't sponsor me, but, you know, if you wanted to. Alright, guys, well, I really, really hope you enjoyed this pit fire and me sealing my piece. I hope, hopefully, that helped somebody who didn't know you can seal your piece with spray seal their piece. I gotta get going now. It was wonderful hanging out with you. If you want to contact me or see some of my artwork, the links are down below. And a giant shout-out to Justin. His Instagram is down below as well. He essentially held my hand through, like, half of the building process. I've already done a pit fire myself before but never by myself with my own built kiln. So thank you very much, Justin. The link to his Instagram is down below. He got the sauce. I love you, Dirty Potters, especially you patrons out there. And I will see you next week. While I was getting these wood chips, I was like, man, I really hope I don't get bitten by a spider. And then the next thought was like, Whoa, I mean, if I do, I'm still going to do the pit fire.